Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching yet another episode of the Earthly Machine Games of 1977. It's Monday night, and you know what that means. It's time for your weekly WWE Monday Night Raw Event Center report. And now here is the man to give you that report, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans, 1977, episode 1,652 of the show. Let's finish the Raw from Bastion, Berlin. And ladies and gentlemen, it kicked off with Ray, uh, in Denver, Colorado. Ray Barrett kicks off Raw and welcomes the newest play-by-play -play announcer, Joe Tessator from ESPN. And, um... Uh... And on ESPN, he did a pretty good, decent job. He's, uh, I think once once he gets once he gets his motor running, once he get, once he gets going, I think he'll he'll really kick it up a notch. But you know what? For the first time, he did pretty good, pretty decent. So, uh, so Ray Ripley came out to address the Judgment Day. Ripley calls out Liv Morgan, and then that idiot, Dirty, dirty Dominic Mysterio, more like uh, dummy. Dominic Mysterio, or Dumb Dominic, Dominic, yeah, Dumb and Nick, come out, Mr. Dum Dum, um, disrespects Ray Ripley. Liv Morgan then attacks Ripley from behind and clips at the knee and then uh, catches it in Ripley's knee on the ropes. And then Damian Priest chases uh, Mysterio and Ripley off. And then Chad Gable uh, motivates American Maid after him losing to um, Uncle Howdy last week, and uh, and then Ray Ripley's upset. Tried they were trying to check her out. She didn't want any medical attention. She's upset, and Damian Priest goes, "Calm down, I got her. I got her." So Damian Priest, good guy, Damian Priest, gotta love him. And then the six-person tag. Alpha Academy versus American May. Um, Alpha Academy is Otis. Otis, Akira Tozawa, and the lovely Maxine Dupree against the Creed Brothers and the very tough Ivy Nile. So, uh, and, uh, and after American, uh, American May won the matchup, thanks to that idiot shrimp, Shorty G himself, um, Chad Gable. Chad Gable decided to issue a challenge to, to the Wyatt Six and Eight person tag street fight. Uncle Howdy interrupts Gable, responds, and accepts the challenge. So it'll be an eight person street fight match. The White Six versus versus uh, American Maid on the season premiere of Raw next week. Zelina Vega went one on one with Shayna Baszler and uh, Shayna Baszler has won that match after Sonya Deville and Zoe Stark got involved. And then um, the, the the Pure Fusion Collective attacked Selena Vega after the matchup. Laya Valkyria tried to come to her aid, but the numbers were too much. And Deville addresses the Denver crowd and the women's division. He say, we, the men couldn't take us home. Uh, <laughs> uh, believe me, if we if we took you home, you probably won't. When we try to, if we try to say, hey, let's meet my parents, you probably rip my arm off and say, no way. So, besides, I'd rather take EO Sky home tomorrow. Anyways, I'd rather take um, Nikita Lyons or Gigi Dolan or even um, Julia. Hey, how about this? Tony, Timeless Tony Storm and Harley Cameron, Layla Gray, Hikaru Shida. I'd rather take them all home tomorrow. My mother will put thing I'm out of my mind. Anyways. <laughs> My I digress. We're moving on. And uh, Priest and Ripley were talking about how to deal with Judgment Day. And then Priest goes, I don't have any partners. I don't have any friends. And I know who to, I know who to talk to. So I was like, <laughs> it's like, okay, Ray's got a day super sleep. And then Vega and Valkyria was talking about dealing with the Pure Protection Collectors. And she was getting upset. And Lyra goes, I know, I know. I said, what are we going to do? Hey, listen. Raw's taking place in Calgary next week, right? Yeah. I got an idea. Follow me. I got a hunch I know who they're going to call on. And we have not seen this young lady in quite a while. Hmm. Well, Miss Natalia may have something to do with this. We'll just... We shall see. 
And then CM Punk came out to address the Denver crowd, saying he's ready to move on to challenge Gunter for the World Heavyweight title. But Drew McIntyre decides to attack CM Punk. And um, Wade Barrett tried to re uh, reason with McIntyre, his longtime friend. But McIntyre just ignored him and started attacking Punk. And McIntyre kept on attacking, attacking, attacking. Officials and referees trying to stop McIntyre. That won't do. And then McIntyre takes Punk's bracelet again and then rips it, takes the beads and shoves it down Punk's throat. That's disrespectful. A fan made that for him. Jack, Drew McIntyre is a jerk. A little grumpy. Somebody ought to, you know, I think Drew McIntyre's turned so ugly. Not, not even a foot to the face will probably re, uh, not even cure him of his ugliness. Anyways. And then uh, after the commercial after the commercial break, and Adam Pierce, he's probably had and had enough of, of Drew McIntyre. CM Punk was taken out on a stretcher, and then McIntyre decided to continue the attack, and CM Punk was mouth's last busted open. I'm going, oh boy, this is going to get ugly in a hurry. A lot of people are saying, hey, hell in a cell between these two gents. I say we get it done, bad blood. So here we go. And then, um, then the first, um, the uh, third match of the number one contenders uh, match for the Intercontinental title. As you know, uh, Jay Uso and Pete Dunne have the first two spots. Who is the third spot going to go to? Dominic Mysterio or the Dragons? Lee and the Mad Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. During the match, Carlito was attacking, attacking, uh, Lee during the matchup, but then, and then Damian Priest um, chases uh, Dom away from the matchup, and uh, Ilya Dragunov took advantage of the situation against Dragon Lee, and ended up winning the matchup to take the third spot in. Take, um, take the third spot in the Fatal Four Way Intercontinental uh, Championship Number One Contenders match next week. In the season premiere. And then uh, Captain Kelly uh, interviews um, Adam Pierce and they're about to address the third spot in the uh, final matchup. And you know, Bronson Reed is not medically clear to compete. Kind to find out he has COVID. But um, so they had to replace him with someone else, Braun Strowman. Despite the fact that Reed hit him with a tsunami on top of a car, he said, I know I shouldn't be here right now to talk to. And I think the doctors are just afraid of afraid to tell Braun Strowman you can't go. Because I'm going to go, and then he goes, "Fine, you're in." But uh, I'm not a good talk of medical. Uh, so, number one contenders match for the women's tag team title, Damage Control. That's Io Sky and Kyrie Sane. Left what's left of Damage Control against the Unholy Union, Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, the former champs, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. We're scouting out the matchup. And then uh, Isla Dawn, and Kyrie Sane meant to do a move, and Isla Dawn moved out of the way, accidentally hit Bianca Belair. And then, you know, Jay Cargo shoves Kyrie Sane away to make sure that uh, Bianca Belair is okay. But the, the former champs took advantage, uh, double teaming EO Sky, and ended up winning the matchup. But then afterwards, Damage Control and the tag champs were going at it. But that leads to another match next week. The um, women's tag title um, on the line as as uh, Alba Fire and, and Dino O'Donnell will try to get the gold back from uh, Jay Cargill Bel Bianca Belair. Don't be shocked if Damage Control gets involved in the situation. Meanwhile, Kobe Kingston was talking to Pierce about um, uh, challenging Judgment Day for the tag titles with him and Ozzy Jones, but then Gunter interrupts them and walks away. And then Damian Priest asked Ray Ripley, did he, uh, did he accept? Did he say yes? No, he didn't. What? He goes, he said, yeet. And I'm like, ah, she got Jey Uso. I know Jey Uso has a thing for Rhea. So, he said, I'm going to I'm gonna have a talk with him about that. And, and so, and and Rhea's going, yeet, which is fun. Uh, Gunter addresses the, the Denver crowd, calling them degenerates and all that. But now he's talking about what his next challenger would be for the World Heavyweight title. Sami Zayn interrupts the ring, Gunter out, and 
decided to challenge him for the title. Gunther says no, and then Sami Zayn had to remind him that I was the one that beat you for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania. But then, walking away. Uh, and walking away is uh, Gunther. Uh, Gunther changed ever since he won that World Heavyweight title. Jackie Redman interviewed Jay Uso about, you know, about uh, facing Braun Breaker, and then Braun Breaker interrupts Uso. You know, None of your family members have defeated my my family members. You gotta remember WrestleMania nine, Steiner Bros, Head Shrinkers, when the Steiners did pick up the victory there. So if Braun Breaker and Uso go one on one, this will be the first time since WrestleMania nine that a um a, a member of the uh and the Whitey family goes against a Ste member of the Steiner family. It's been a long time since it's happened. And Braun Breaker says, I'm going to hurt you and I'm going to break you if you advance the tournament. Drop out of the tournament. And then Uso says, uh-uh, I'm taking that title from you. But then they had the second Intercontinental title matchup, um, number one contenders match, I should say, between Braun Strowman, Sheamus, and Ludwig Kaiser. And uh, Pete Dunne attacked Sheamus during the match with a shillelagh and uh, gives uh, Braun Strowman the opportunity and the advantage despite getting hurt, being hurt and he beat Ludwig Kaiser to get that fourth and final spot so the fatal four way number one contenders match for the Intercontinental title Jay Uso versus Pete Dunn versus versus Ilya Dragunov and versus Braun Strowman be tough for me to call, I want either Dragunov or Strowman to win in my personal opinion, I, mean, I like Jay Uso but he's got a lot on his plate and he'll be getting more on his plate if he's not careful. You know, Uso and Priest talking out. Let's we'll, we'll talk about my past and listen. I've been there. I've been down that road with you. Where you were, it's all good. It's fine. So, they got that. Jackie Redmond interviewed Pete Dunn. He said, it's a little message from an old friend. And then she and she mentioned the word butt. She said, do not call me. I was going to say, for God, if I swear to God, if Pete Dunn has one hair on Jackie Redmond's beautiful head, he going, he going to have, him and I going to have heat, <laughs> so to speak. But Pete Dunn, res show restraint. Meanwhile, J uh, the um, the main event, Jay Uso and Damian Priest went up against uh, Finn Balor and JD McDonough. Or I like call him JD McDonald's or JD McDumbass or JD McDummy or JD McDoo. Anyways, they're big headed Klingon look alike. Um, the tag champs went up against Uso and Priest. Liv Morgan gets involved during the matchup, you know, hitting Jay Uso um, with a low blow, so to speak, um, dropping him on top of the turnbuckle. And then Ray Ripley came out with the, with her crutch, and despite walking on one leg, running on one leg, chases Morgan away, Liv Morgan away with her crutch. Meanwhile, Priest and Uso took advantage. And has a victory over the tag champs and leaves Rhea and everybody else yeeting with Jay Uso. Yeet. So, that is it for the fallout of Bash in Berlin. And uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Tomorrow we're going to have high rollers and I'm going to prove to these chumps that I'm not a cheater over there. I can't believe it. Some people are loopy. <whistles> Boring. <sighs> okay, wake up. Kids, go back to school. <laughs> I just don't have to worry about you, you dopes. Anyways, um, but um, also, I'm, I'm trying to work on a bullseye me uh, theme song mega mix. I want to give a shout out to Blank Page for um, providing us with the music. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to mix it all. I'm going to try to do a mega mix and do like a photo montage and a tribute to Bullseye. And, and as you know, tomorrow will be the 44th anniversary of the game of strategy, luck, knowledge, and daring. That's right. It premiered September the 3rd, 1980. Looking forward to see what I can come up with. All right, I'm hoping to get it all together tomorrow. So, until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for... Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget Productions. And in association with... 
or even both for telepictures and distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.